Legends right now, Mike Ross and D Barnes. How y'all doing? Three. Well, we have Fat Lip too, but I didn't know if we want to introduce him just yet. But, but we're three legends now. Three, three. But anyways, how y'all doing? Good. We good, man. We, you know, my voice is cracking because you know we had it cracking today at the black party. Mike. Oh, never mind. We in here. <laughs> Yo, pump it up. <laughs> Yo, we on Pump It Up right now. Check out this video. <laughs> yeah, All right, we're... Yeah, for real. But anyways, um, much much like... No, no, that's cool. What radio station you work with? Um, with Be Great. Be Great. <laughs> Be Great. What radio station you work with? Oh. Oh, you can hit me like that. Fireside TV. Oh. 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 It's been exposed. It's been exposed. Like no, he oh, hey, but he was working with Beat Grade first, and then I think Romine recruited Stop trying to oh, Dang, whose interview is this? Anyways, yo, I I was just trying to ask questions. Oh, my God. You work far side. All right, I've been silent. I'm allowed to use that word. He just Cut said that. that. Speaking about Pump It Up, you were one of the first hip-hop journalists to do that. Please speak on that. You're definitely a legend in... All aspects. What are you humming about? <laughs> uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I wasn't one of the first to do, but I was one of the first females to do it. You know, Fab Five Freddy was doing it. Um, then we Yo had, MTV yeah, we had Yo MTV Raps. Pump It Up came on after that, and then we had um, Rap City on BT. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but uh, as far as the first, I was one of the first females to actually do it. And when we were talking to Mark earlier, it was about being on the West Coast. It was the only show that represented a lot of the West Coast artists. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I was originally from New York, I wanted to make sure that we represented everybody. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the the key things that I loved about Pump It Up is that we would have a, a known act, and then we would have a small act. Like for one time, I had I was interviewing Too Short. And the B side, we would call it the B side, the smaller group that nobody had heard of was Gangstar. Mm -hmm. So it was like Ooh. things like Gangstar. It was things like that. Rest in peace, Guru. Rest in Shout peace. out to DJ Premier. My man. I'm a grumpy old man. Hold on. I'm just a grumpy old man. Spell it. Facetious? Mark, how do you spell it? Exactly. <laughs> how much you pay? <laughs> what the hell? Why can't I just say it? You did. You did say it. You did what? Well. And it's right where it belongs. It sure did. <laughs> Wow. There's so many six degrees of separation because Guru, mm -hmm. he, he was on an album that was Fat Lips. The first time Fat Lip was ever on an album was not Bizarre Ride to the Far Side. Oh. It was Heavy Rhyme Experience. Oh, they were the only group that no one really knew about. Talk about like new artists right. when you just said that. Yes. I don't know how I just got to there, but. That was it. So Black Sheep, Gangstar, Cool G Rap. All these, like, all my favorite rappers, and I went to these guys, yo. I mean, I was going to get you guys anyways, I think, because we were connecting. But I was like, you guys want to be on this record we're just finishing? You'll be the only group that's not really known, and all the greats are on it. And boom, Soul Flower was born. The Farmer Man. The farmer man. Hey, I mean, keeping it on that vibe, if we just talking about, like, the synergy and, like, the cosmos and all of that, like, brand new heavies. Like, brand new heavies, like, where did, I was like, man, this is before I was on, the, all right, first of all, all right, we talking about Delicious Vinyl, right? Because back in the day, you didn't know about record deals, right? So really, all you wanted to do is get one of those jackets. 
They had the Def Jam jacket, and they had the, the, if you got one of those jackets, you was on. You know what I mean? Did you ever get one? Because they were gone by the time you came around. I got no, I got one. No, nah, but real OG ones, the Letterman jacket. Yeah, Letterman jacket. But you did that reissue though. Oh, we reissued those, maybe. D Barnes. Mm-hmm. Okay, that one right there. Now, we talk about your MTV raps and all that. Forget all that. No disrespect, but let me just put it this way. She got hip hop, West Coast hip hop, on national television. That's what I'm looking at. MTV cable, yay. She was on Fox. Yes. The new, the new she was on Fox. <laughs> Who everyone looks at now as the enemy. She broke ground on national TV. No well, one done Fox that. TV but is the enemy. Fox News is Fox the news enemy. Fox News is the enemy. But everyone's trying to say Fox News. Let's just don't conflate that then, with Fox News now. Like, Fox yeah. is on some dope shit. Because they're just lucky to get in on the hip-hop. But back, in the, but back in the day, but back yeah. in the day, I mean, back in the day, Fox was a lot more liberal than they are now. Well, I mean, they still got... Compared to the late show. Look at their television, though. Yeah, that's different. That's different. Exactly. Exactly. We got the four on there now. Empire. Would uh, star? Okay, I got a question for you. Would there be a pump it up in 2018 on Fox? Possibly. 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 Wait, did we just come up with an idea? <laughs> I mean, I mean, everybody, I mean but there's you a see? range. If you look at Fox right now with Empire, excuse me, Stars, and um, what's the other one? The Four. Queen of the South and all that stuff. That's all. No, that. Queen yeah. of the South is not on. That's not on. Fox. No, no, that's on regular. But what I'm saying is, yeah. there's a lane for that. There's a lane for that. So, Honestly, I want to make it a. a lane so you think that you think that uh, uh, you think a, a pump it up would be we could break national TV again. I think Pump it's it up to. would be better. Yeah. I mean, a, a reboot would be cool, but honestly, I want that late night spot. Ooh, there it is there. Spot. I want that late night spot. Now, well, wait, it was okay. a late night though, right? Yeah, it was, 11.30. No, 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 I'm talking about late night talk show. Like, late night. Oh, night. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like every no, night? Yeah, like every yeah. night, no monologue, straight to the Just music. music. Straight now, to you, music. Mike, straight to Mike, you, this oh. man right here, a lot of people, brand new heavies, but we got to go with one of the OGs. You got to go with the Tone Lokes. Oh, yes. You gotta go with the young MCs. Yeah. And that was the light bill. They paid the light bill. <laughs> Who you telling? <laughs> <He's> a, <laughs> that's, 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 that's what they for delicious pizza, you, right? Um, I think it was a young MC video shoot. Right? I'm not sure, but that's where I met Cypress Hill. Okay. In fact, but be real used to show up to all our shows before right. before Cypress Hill. I don't care where we were. He was there. He was like, be real. Be real was like, I was like, I want support team. So he I got, I got, exactly. He is. And he was supporting it. So I got, I got a good story Did you about Cypress. Huh? Did you blaze with him? Back then, no, no. Uh, no, no, he wasn't, he wasn't that. Yeah, he was all really scrawny. This was on Universal Final, obviously. It was early 12 inches. And then I made a deal with Capitol Records because this dude Kenny Ortiz right. was jockeying me so hard for That's him. Right. And he was an A&R guy. I was already, we were releasing Tone's album and Young's album and it was mad hectic, so. Capitol Records was going to spend a grip on him, you know, Ace was down with it, so it was a good move. So we're finishing the record, though, at Felicia's Violin, our studio, which is a 16-track studio. Mm-hmm. On Santa Monica. You never recorded there. We did. Santa Monica one, yeah. They made all our early stuff. Basquiat painting on the bathroom door, blocking There's it. That Matt McCartney and Basquiat <laughs> door. Blocking it. 16-track, Alan Heath, one-inch, Tascam, we everything we did there. So, Melman's recording his record there, and Tony G did a couple of his tracks. Oh, yes. He did Mental Rosa. Uh, That's right. He was a giant hit. Right. And we were finishing the album, and I walked in, and they were working on this song called Rhyme Fighter. But they were just goofing around, and Melman was talking in this crazy high voice. And I walk in and go, dude, that's so dope. He's like, it sounds totally different. It's like, eh, 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 eh. And I go, that's dope. Go that way on the whole record. And B-Real was on the record with him. And Next they know. just started going with that style. And B never lost and So he put out this record called um, Rhyme Fighter. It was a single off Mel Menace. Listen to that record and listen to the way he's rapping. And then I'm not saying anything other than, than B Real and Cypress Hill and the rest is his. I mean, well, yeah. Mel Man basically, Sin Dog is Mel Man's cousin. So I mean, basically. No, it's his brother. Brother. His brother, excuse me. So mm-hmm. yeah, he basically put that group together. So Sam used to transpose English into Spanish, so Ace could rap in Spanish as well as English. I mean, he could do it too, but the wording was different, so it sounded really dope, because I wanted him to rap in Spanish on every track that he was doing in English. So, so Mike, how can you go from Tone Loke, Young MC, 
to brand new heavies and far side because it's like two totally different. Can I answer that? Not really. Yes, Go right yes ahead. please. I think because it was 80, because you're talking about 80, 88 and 89, and even maybe a little bit of 90s was completely different yep. than 91, 92. Yes. It was a certain point. point. Yeah, it was a certain point. point. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I thought I was the, label, telling... the label was just growing. It was just like yeah. expanding. You know what well, I mean? Well, hip hop was growing. Hip hop was changing. Hip hop was growing, but so was the label. Some labels don't grow like that. But I mean, you know, I get an import of this brand new Heavy's record and it's super dope. It's a live, funky ass group playing like James Brown. Oh, like, man. Who are these dudes? And so immediately, because we always use live instruments. Always. This was his always. Thing. This is like a live, this is like a live funk band because everything was a lot of program R&B, you know, yeah, in the right. late 80s. It's all like, and he's still, but it's cool. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, who are like heroes of mine. But then Kashif, all that like super yeah. R and B. Kashif, the old like live play wasn't really happening. Stuff. And these guys got to play loops, you know. That's oh, why the rappers love them so much. Is Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis still your your boys, even though they stole credit from Dilla though? Those guys are legends. Wait, what? Dilla, Dilla was talking about that in an interview. He was saying I mean, that he didn't get credit off, for Jan ripped, Jackson. They ripped off um, sometimes. Uh, remix. Uh, and uh, gotcha, you got till it's gone. You give them props. Yeah, yeah they give them props. I talked to Jimmy Jam about it. Yeah. They just redid a, a beat. Right. That sounds has like you know, <laughs> Mike was on the record too. Right. He's, he's the, the one that got the connect. Ah, right. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, and that shit was dope. <laughs> <laughs> on that. Oh, it's a classic. Till it's gone was dope. I don't know if you've seen that interview when he was talking about the, uh, Jimmy Jam. Was like like him. Sure he was. Like, yo, he gave him of course. Jimmy Jam was like that. Yeah, cool. I mean, that was their yeah. whole thing with instruments. That's how uh, Body and Soul wound up working with Trouble Funk. That's know, right. That was even before that. Dance to the drum and beat, yeah. So we were really into go-go music, me and my partner, Matt. We really into live instruments. We'd be sampling go-go records all the time. Chuck Brown and Trouble Funk. And then Trouble Funk was on Island Records. Yeah. We were signed to Island Records. So me and Chris Blackwell and Matt, we always talked about groups that were on Island. And Trouble Funk was like one of our favorite groups. Yes. He said we could work with them because they were not getting along. This was mm -hmm. that period when mm -hmm. a lot of synthesized music is going on. Trouble's mm -hmm. a live band. Like, they wanted us to like, you know, chop up stuff. And it's like, hell no, it's Trouble. We want to record you guys live. And so we brought back a lot of beats. And we had them do Dance to the Drummer's Beat and Body and Soul and the Yeah, on that. And we got yeah, some tracks that, that recorded with them. That was Def Jeff spit on a couple of those. Yep. That was pre-brand new heavies. That was kind of like so a go-go. We were experimenting. Classic, classic. classic. Mike, because uh, we're a beat grade, a producer channel, you know, we focus on producers. I did read in the credits that you produced Wild Thing and Funky Cold Medina, right. which are some of the best hip-hop tracks ever recorded. I just was curious about that process in myself because I read that on the credits. We're going to get this out right now because I've been wanting to ask you this for a long oh, time. Oh, wow. Did you do that for like frat parties or did you do that no. for real? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have listened to Tone's album, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you listen to the beats on that album, yeah. Wild Thing and Funko Medina are kind of anomalies on that record. Yeah. They're dope. I mean, listen, we were listening to everything. Obviously, Ruben is killing it with Run DMC, True. right? I mean, True. it's tricky. Wild Thing is kind of an homage to it's tricky. Right. So if you really want to know the truth, Matt, my partner, that. I, I mean, really is. there was an idea to go after oh, that. He made this beat. But it's tricky was kind of setting a template, you know? So a lot of dudes are doing that, and so just throwing in. So he was really into rock, too. So yeah, he found yeah. uh, Jamie's crying shit. And so Damn. when that beat yeah, came up, crazy. I was like, yo, this is crazy. And I knew immediately you what knew we could do with that. Do that. Well, no, it was just a, we had an idea for a song. Because uh, I had this idea because I had been watching uh, Do the Right Thing. Not Do the Right Thing. She's got to have it. Okay. And, uh, and Fat Five Freddy says, you'll be able to do the wild thing. <laughs> that always stuck to me. I was yeah. good friends with that by Freddie too. Yeah. But something when we were listening to that beat, I just I heard like wild thing, something about some dude trying to get laid would be a funny idea. Because you know story rhymes are always everyone was doing story rhymes. Well, what, it's really what, a story so rhyme. So Tom was your first pick for that? Huh? Tom was your first well, we pick. We were working with Tom at Tone at the time. He's like our only rapper at the time. Oh, okay. So and Tone had this dope voice. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Tom wrote some that music. voice is the most That's unique voice. Oh, yeah. I love it. And, on, and he, he couldn't pick no one else to do Wild Thing. He couldn't pick Well, no, I mean, we were working on the record, and Tone liked the beat, too. And so when we had this concept of Wild Thing, Tone wrote some really funny-ass verses to it. And we just, you know, he spit it, and it was just, it was kind of a no brainer I personally want to know, is like, you know how radio, like how you were saying earlier, you introduced a local act yes. and then with a bigger act. Mm -hmm. And that's called sandwiching. Right. Would you say that um, radio kind of picked that up from Pump It Up, or would you say it was a concept that was already there at the time? That's a 
your question. I don't think mm -hmm. they picked it up from home, but I don't think they really paid attention as far as that's concerned. That's like the talk show format, right? Yeah, you it's come a out talk on a talk show, show you bring out your biggest star it's first. It's a talk show and format. That's the... more of a television format. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't create it. I just ran with it. You know, mm -hmm. um, pump it up. gave it its beauty and its flavor. Ha ha. Pump it up. Really, if you look at it, um, one of the earlier shows on Fox was mm -hmm. Cops. Right. Mm. And that was what we were going at here. That's why we never really stayed still. We were always on location. We were mm. always on the right. That's what we did. Everyone. So basically, when we showed up, it was just cops. There was um, uh, The Simpsons, because they actually put me on after The Simpsons uh, to introduce the show, to get people to watch it. And then it was Married with Children. Oh my God. So that's, yeah, that's wow. like, we were just, and then, then Living Color came. And Living mm. Color came. We were on the same set. Fast forward. I got a funny story about Living Color. I got plenty. <laughs> when, you guys, when you guys were on Living Color, you know, Tupac was there that night. Oh, sure. And that was the night. I walked out because they were always late taping. And I was hanging. You guys taped super late that night. I think I did you both. I walked by the limousine. Give me, give me Tupac's in the limousine. Yeah. 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 It's that night. The night you guys recorded. So did he get arrested or something? Yes, he did. Remember what happened? Yeah. It was when they did the Jim Carrey thing. Oh, no. No, no. Yeah. No, no. No, no. When you guys did Pass Me By. Yeah. When Jamie Foxx was doing it. He didn't get arrested. 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 But with you, D, just seeing how everything has progressed in media, how are you feeling? Do you feel like it's really just clickbaity and gimmicky? Mm -hmm. Click, clickbait. Mm -hmm. I don't think gimmicky right. was the word, but clickbait, yes. It's like sensationalized. Yeah. Even, um, well, I need to bring that topic up, but it's more, <laughs> it's more clickbait, you know what I mean? If you look at the titles and you, you get like sucked into this title and it's nothing, it's no substance mm -hmm. there. But um, I don't think it's, it's gimmicky per se. And also, we all know about the Shadow Compton movie, mm -hmm. and you weren't really happy with that. So, did you want us to go ahead and speak on well, that? Well, it wasn't that I wasn't happy with the movie. Mm -hmm. It's just that, you know, these are, uh, you know, NWA is, is about, you know, gangster rap. And gangster yeah, rap is about reality rap. Mm -hmm. And they weren't showing the true reality of their whole story. Mm -hmm. And in particular, they weren't really focusing on the women. The, um, what I what I addressed in the article that I wrote because it wasn't about being not being happy with the movie. Right, right. It's about not showing all the women because if you read the article that I wrote, mm -hmm. I mentioned you know Rage, I mentioned Michelle, of course, I mentioned Joel, you know what I mean? I mentioned JJ Fat. Mm -hmm. If we fast forward to the Defiant ones, I'm the one that mentioned that JJ Fat opened the door right. for Ruthless Records, right, right, right. and because of that, they had to kind of like, oh yeah, that's true. And somebody had to be the voice for the women. And, I mean, like, you know, their, big, their first hit. Their, they the first first black, so what are you going to say? Who was paying the guy. bills? But, they were paying the bills. And you but see Tolo, he's, he's still been JJ Fad paid the bills for Ruthless Retro. They opened the door. It was the first black The whole reason that they put that out was to get radio airplay. And then right. they, they brought in the boys in the hood. You know what I mean? That's but right. nobody wanted to deal with them. That's it right. was just them. But because they were expecting another, like, oh, it's going to be another radio hit. They were able to, to come on in, in there. So it wasn't that I wasn't happy with the movie. I just wanted to point out some serious discrepancies. <laughs> I, also want to talk, I also want to talk to you about, since you're talking about women in hip hop media, how are you feeling about the Me Too movement and how that's kind of going into hip hop? It's not going into hip hop enough. Uh, not at all. So mm -hmm. there's still a lot of work to, to be done on that because, you know, if we just uh, talk about, and even though she's not a hip hop artist, we talk about what happened at um, Aretha Franklin's funeral. Right, right. Ariana Grande. Mm -hmm. Everybody's slut shaming Ariana Grande about her dress, but they're not addressing the pastor because this is all about misogyny to me. Yeah, of course. What was she wearing? She had a short dress on. Yeah. And if you, you know, you know if you go to the black church, and how many black churches has she been? She, didn't know, she, she didn't know she was supposed to wear a certain, you know, and if, if, if Someone women, should have told her. Well, not just, well, you know. But, you know, what's kind of not, a celebration? Not just that. Like, when you go to church and you would have on a short dress, the, the, the elders would give you a handkerchief and they put it on your, your legs. Right, you know what I mean? right. But the handkerchief wasn't to cover you up. It was to 
cover you up from cool. distracting the men. The men. The distraction. It was cool. a distraction cool. to the to the men. It yeah, wasn't like to, to protect the women. It was to protect the you know to cover them up from the, yep. from the men being distracted, the deacons being distracted, right. you know, right. the preacher being distracted. Right. Yep. But my my point of that is that everybody focused on what she wore and not you know what happened to her. And with hip hop in particular, of course there's you know the hip hop was based off of braggadocious things, you know what I mean? We go all the way back to like Schooly D, right? Yep. And what he talked about. Yeah. Um, so there's always been that side to it, but I think when things started crossing over, when it becomes like, you know, we have like 6 9 who's been accused of, you yeah, know, of course. Thing. we have Kodak Black who was just in jail for Yeah, like, even Charlamagne and, recently got... Yeah, and, oh, Charlamagne is a whole nother... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we can't even go into that because he actually <laughs> talked about it and laughed about it on... It all really goes back to so the yeah, yeah. 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 which is why I had to check them because it was like, okay, now you're crossing over to you know from the record to the album. But then when you do your movie, it's like, oh, that didn't happen. No. It's like that. We were talking about how you would love to have a late night spot and everything. Right. And I'm pretty sure you're hip to what's going on with hip hop and newer acts. Mm -hmm. Who would you have as your bigger act, and then who would you sandwich coming up? Mm. Well, first of all, I would definitely be pulling up some of these female MCs because nobody mm. knows about them. Nobody's talking mm. about them. Mm. They're not. They're, it, actually, if I reboot Pump It Up, I'm gonna focus on the women. I might not have any men on. Awesome. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So much respect from the West Coast. I it. Exactly. I it right. There are things. <laughs> fuck it. I'm gonna come out and say it. Just there say are it. things that aren't together that could be together, but they're not together. There are people that could be together that are not together, and I think they need people like you that's out there that that has been through a lot, that has put hip hop on the map out here. One of the people putting hip hop on the map out here to have that respect. To sit down in rooms like this right. and get people together, have to. seminars, have conferences, have panels, so that the young can learn what you've seen. Right. They can know what you've seen through your eyes, and they can pass it on, so that they don't have to listen to you know um, what's his name, uh, uh, take a shit six nine. What's his name? Oh, six nine. Oh, no. Six nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take, a, take, a, take a number, what's the name? Takashi. Takashi, okay. Yeah. I don't know what's name. I mean, yeah. 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 But yeah, I'm just saying, it's like, they don't have to like, you know, handle, you know, shit out there just from that. Right, they can right. watch you, right. and they can find out, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, okay, so you what's really going on in hip-hop. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. You guys are twins. Okay. She's in the middle of something. Break <laughs> your mic on the couch. Break your mic on the couch. We're good, Mike. We're good. What was that?